SMSU basketball fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler. I'm your host, Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University. The head coach is back in studio. We'll talk about last weekend's games versus Bemidji State and Minnesota Crookston. Take a look at the highlights from those contests and also preview this weekend's games versus Minnesota State and Concordia St. Paul. And back after a two-week hiatus from the show, Chad Welk, assistant coach, did a fabulous job, uh, Brad, in your, your absence. You were uh, out of town a few times on recruiting and uh, whatnot, so Chad filled in. And, um, you know, he said maybe if we went 2-0 this past weekend, uh, he'd he, still be in the saddle he, here, but uh, you're back. I agree. I think, uh, you know, on combination of that and I going one-on-one, -on -one, and then the ratings did take a dip yes, they on did. that second week. So... I uh, had to make a play and had to get back, uh, get back on the show. Well, we were great to have you back, Coach. The Mustangs this past weekend splitting a pair of home games against Bemidji State and Minnesota Crookston. The Mustangs uh, played a red-hot Bemidji State team on Friday and lose 91-82. A big 12-0 run by the Beavers late in the second half was the, the downfall for the Mustangs. But Southwest rallied back on Saturday. On Hawaiian night, a festive atmosphere, great crowd, and the Mustangs win 79-53 to using a 24-0 run in the first half to blow that game open. And the Mustangs now 14-8 overall and 11-5 and in the conference, right there the, near the top of the standings, uh, third place in the division, and uh, also uh, right up there in fourth place uh, overall in the conference as well. Coach, uh, we talked about, as I mentioned, uh, Friday night, Bemidji State, uh, the Red Hot team played very well this year. They've won at Southwest. They've won at Augie. Um, they've, you know, picked up some big wins, their first place in the North Division, and uh, give them credit. They made some plays down the stretch, and uh, when they make 11 threes and uh, shoot 61%, 70 in the second half, they're usually going to win, and the Beavers did. And going into the game, um, you know, we, we identified that there wasn't a whole lot of teams that were pressing them, even though they're playing six guys, uh, pressing them or playing zone. So we, we threw a different variety of defenses at them, and uh, give Coach Boshi credit. Uh, those guys were prepared, and uh, they stepped up and made some big shots. Yeah, the Mustangs shot very well as well, matching the Beavers shooting 54%, but just 6 of 25 from long range. Um, a lot of those threes, you know, in the second half, Mustangs trying to, to rally back in the final minutes. But the Beavers uh, do something that most opponents don't do, and that's out-rebound the Mustangs, just a fourth opponent this year to out-rebound Southwest. And then they did that, did that by 10, and the amazing number on that coach is when they shoot 61%. They're not supposed to get that many rebounds, and, and uh, they did a good job. But when there was a ball loose, they got the, they got those boards. And that was the story of the first half. Uh, we did have some opportunities that first half where they took some quick shots. Uh, there were some loose balls, 50-50 balls, as we like to say. And uh, they came up with them. And not only did they get those offensive rebounds, then they followed up with knocking down mm -hmm. uh, a couple three-pointers off it. So those are just huge plays where if you get those stops, you're going back the other way. All of a sudden, maybe they're a little hesitant. Uh, just that confidence isn't the same, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't capitalize on it. Well, of course, it was a game of runs. The Mustangs ha had a lead in the first half. Bemidji State came back and took a two-point lead at halftime, and uh, they had a, a big lead in the second half. Yeah. You rallied back, and the Mustangs, you know, despite the disappointment of the loss, with seven minutes to go, you're up by, uh, up by two points, and uh, the Beavers then got a big run, go on a 12-0 spurt, and, uh, and that was pretty much it, about a two-minute span, and, and the game was over. And we had some good looks. Um, you know, on that span, Nick Smith was out initially, but came back in. Uh, we went inside of Nick, and uh, he had a couple kick-out passes, and we had some guys that had some good looks from three-point range, and unfortunately, the ball didn't fall our way. Well, the Mustangs had five players in double figures scoring in the ball game. Uh, Nick Smith, 19 points, seven rebounds, nine of ten shooting uh, in the contest, and his only miss was uh, a half-court three-pointer, and uh, uh, gave him credit for the three-point attempt. But pretty much a, a perfect night for Nick, and uh, you know he's had uh, some ups and downs this year, but a lot more ups, and he's really playing at a high level. And this whole entire weekend, uh, basically missing uh, three two-point shots in uh, 20 some plus attempts. And when you look at Nick and, and even Matt Zager for that mark, part, for their whole careers, both of them have been so efficient. Uh, Nick is a guy who, who, who doesn't take bad shots. He, he, he really goes to rhythm when he gets in his rhythm, one-on-ones, he, he looks to attack, he goes to a jump hooks. Uh, if it's not there, he kicks it out. Very unselfish player and someone who's playing, like you said, just playing well right now. And, and we need to 
continue to feed him the basketball and uh, see what he can do. Well, one thing that uh, we see both nights, uh, you know, struggling from three-point range uh, percentage-wise, Mustangs is 2-11 against Crookston, but uh, the shots are there, and I'm sure you're just going to keep encouraging these guys in practice and in games that, you know, just keep shooting it, and once that couple fall in a row, you know, it could spark somebody. And, uh, you know, despite the, that fact, uh, you know, again, not shooting particularly well, just eight of uh, 36 from behind the arc in these two games. Well, when we make threes, it, it changes how defenses have to defend us. And um, our offense is attacking the paint, trying to get easy buckets. Uh, we're getting good looks. It's a matter of just guys stepping up and knocking them down. Well, the Mustangs lose 91-82. We'll look at the highlights in a little bit. But uh, come back on Saturday, Coach, and beat Minnesota Crookston by a score of 79-53. to And UMC came out red hot, probably should have won their game Friday night against Sioux Falls, and uh, a desperate tr uh, team trying to get uh, back in the win column. And they start off red hot, making some three-pointers. And that kind of seems to be the, the downfall here in the last, uh, really the last month. But I guess maybe the whole season, just a, a tough start. You tried different combinations, and... A team's really uh, getting off to a, a fast lead here against the Mustangs in the, in the last few games, at least. And it has been, you know, it's been a combination of a lot of things. Uh, on Saturday versus Crookston, we wanted it to be a high-paced game. We wanted a lot of possessions. Uh, so there we were going to give up some threes, and uh, there was a guy who knocked down two or three threes who, uh, from a statistical standpoint, hadn't been shooting the ball very well. So uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's just uh, the way the ball bounces, and, uh, that guy stepped up, and he played well all night, mm -hmm. and uh, give him credit. Uh, but then as, a, as the first half went on, I, I've never heard of, I don't know if you have, but I don't know if I've heard of a 24-0 run uh, happening too much. And I think when that happens, sometimes, uh, yeah, obviously we played some, some solid defense. The ball was going our way, but uh, I'm sure that they missed a couple shots in there that helped us out. Yeah, the game was tied at 16 with uh, just – under 10 minutes to go in the first half, and then the Mustangs reel off 24 uh, consecutive points. And as Coach mentioned, there was uh, you know very good defense, obviously, on the Mustangs side, but the Eagles, uh, Golden Eagles, missed a couple of bunnies, and the Mustangs led 46-22 uh, at halftime. Mustangs uh, leading the way. Their top scorer was Sean Condon. He had 20 points on 7 of 12, uh, shooting at a couple of three-pointers. Hit the only two three-pointers the Mustangs made uh, in the game. Nick Smith, uh, one rebound away from a double-double. He had 18 points and nine rebounds, 9 of 12 shooting. And, uh, the Mustangs make 34 field goals in the game, shoot 58%. And uh, those are high numbers uh, despite the, the struggles from long range, uh, getting great looks to the basket and good action to the rim. And, uh, you know, you look at the numbers, uh, uh, 60 points in the paint. Uh, those are pretty good. It usually means they're going to get a win. Yeah, and 60 points in the paint, there wasn't a whole lot for assists um, because guys were getting layups and guys were driving, attacking. Um, the, the open lanes were, were there, and they were taking advantage of them. And the UMC shoots just 30%, made eight field goals in the second half, seven in the first, and that's a, a season low by any Mustang opponent. So the Mustangs uh, bounce back and get the victory uh, against uh, Minnesota Crookston. And, and the crazy thing about this league, Coach, uh, Bemidji State, the next night, you know, playing very high-level basketball, goes to Sioux Falls and loses to USF, who the night before should have lost to UMC, Upper Iowa, sweeps uh, Moorhead and Northern State. Uh, it just shows, I mean, the top 10, 11, 12 teams in this conference, uh, even more than that, uh, can beat anybody at home or on the road. It's it's just a wild league this year. Especially that second night. Uh, that's where you're seeing a lot of those upsets, where, uh, whether it's a team even at home or the team on the road, it doesn't matter. Those second nights, uh, there's some unpredictability right now, and, and guys are, um, you know, that's where you see some of the veterans maybe stepping up. Uh, and making more plays on that second night. Well, again, the Mustangs beat Bemidji State, or lose to Bemidji State, I should say, 91-82, to and then bounce back and beat Minnesota Crookston. Let's take a look at the highlights uh, from the RA facility. We start off here in the game against Bemidji State, Coach. Mustangs going right to left in the white uniforms, and Southwest off the bat, uh, shooting 55% in the opening half. We see... Uh, a basket there for the Mustangs, and here's Mitch Wegg, a nice bounce pass to uh, Matt Zager. And early on, we were um, getting some backdoors and getting some passes over the top of their defense. Um, I thought they made some adjustments and really tried to pack it in um, uh, and try to make some plays later on. Again, the Mustang, there's Zager with the uh, layup. 
continue on here in this uh, first half. Bemidji State matching the Mustangs. They shoot 52%. Here you're going to see uh, some good ball movement right here. Uh, Nick Smith's going to take a nice move. Goes right to that jump hook and on the finish. Again, Nick, 9 of 10 in the game. His only miss was a desperation three from about half court. Mustang 6 of 25 from three-point range. Sean Condon knocking that one down. And Sean right here bails out Jory a little bit. Uh, nice little cutting uh, for a layup. Here's and Will Giddings here on the top of the key. And I thought <clears throat> throughout the weekends, uh, Will Giddings had great energy. He had some nice dunks, as we'll see here. Uh, I thought Sean Condon's pace, uh, just his rhythm. Uh, he, was, he was in a comfort zone and, and, and really shot the ball well and, and played well all weekend. Mustangs in the corner. Joey Bartlett off the assist from Osmondson. Southwest, one of ten from three-point range in the opening half. He's off an end out. Will Giddings explosive dunk with the one hand. And then Nick Smith going to work here on the right block. Boy, he can do it both sides, the and one, sometimes with the left hand. Spins it up with the right hand as well. There's the offensive rebound and gets that one to roll right in. And Southwest led by 7, 25-18 in the first half. The Beavers then rally back and regain the lead. But there's Mitch Wegg who's uh, doing an excellent job back of the starting lineup. He had six points, four rebounds. And it really comes back to his defensive intensity. That's why... Uh, that's one of the reasons we moved him back in the lineup. We wanted to be able to defend in that first five minutes, and uh, he's doing a good job of it. Let's just see the continued patience by Smith. That one with the left hand, and then continuing at the inside present. Here's Mitch Wegg off a great pass from Matt Zager. And, and Mitch hasn't shown that a whole lot this year, but he is capable of knocking down that 15-footer. Back-to-back plays here for the senior from Iowa, Nick Smith. Moving up that scoring list now at Southwest, 11th all-time. Of course, we can't forget as well, Matt Zager reaching 1,000 points in the second half. We saw that just a couple of uh, clips ago. David Condon got a run here, Coach. He's there under the block. Uh, put him in, a bigger guy for the Mustangs. You see Sean Condon with that layup. And then here's a really tough hit in the paint. Yes, and this weekend... Uh, we also went with uh, Travis Miners a little bit more this weekend. Uh, he's been learning some more time, and I think he took advantage of the opportunity and uh, really played some pretty quality minutes, especially against Crookston. Smith on the baseline with the spinner. Mustangs now. This is a crucial time trying to rally back into the contest. Here's Giddings at the top of the key, launching a three, drills it. Mustangs were desperate at that time here to get some long-range baskets and finally got that one to go. And here's Will with the and one. Off the dunk, big-time play. And <clears throat> I think now uh, we're trying to, with this last little run right here, we are still still have a chance to make, make some plays, get back in the game. Um, we won't see the missed shots on this play, but... Uh, Definitely some good shots, similar to this shot right here where Joey Bartlett knocks down that three. Uh, just wide open looks where guys have to be able to make those. Uh, if you want to beat uh, quality time, teams like Bemidji. That three by uh, Bartlett gave the Mustangs a two-point lead. That was with seven minutes to go, but unfortunately the Mustangs then just went uh, ice cold for a couple of minutes. The Beavers go 12 straight points. Here's Zager knocking down a three from the left wing and then a couple of highlights here uh, Bartlett with the three and then uh, making a two-pointer as well but uh, the Beavers just too too tough down the stretch uh, holding off the Mustangs and uh, getting uh, the victory by a count of 91 at 282 here's Bartlett driving and showing the athleticism as well he's uh, obviously been able to uh, shoot the basketball but uh, um, there you saw a few times, Coach, when he drives, I mean, that game's going to develop, and you're going to see not only Joy be able to do that, but uh, Mitch Wegg as well. The other way, we see a lot of putbacks and layups, but Mitch is going to be able to shoot better throughout his career, and Joy probably be more of an aggressive to the basket as well. I think for both of them, uh, Mustang fans have to be pretty excited for their future. Uh, both those guys have, 
have demonstrated that they can play at this level and they can play at a high level. And uh, again, the Mustangs, we should mention, uh, as you mentioned briefly during the highlights, but Matt Zager uh, getting uh, 1,000 uh, career points. And uh, you just talk about uh, those senior group coach, and we've got a whole lot of basketball left this year. But when you look at Zager and Smith getting 1,000 points, Bernard Birch, all-time assist leader, and uh, it's nice to get some of those records out of the way. Uh, obviously, as a player and as a coach, you got to worry about if they're thinking about that stuff. And uh, I don't think we really had any more records to deal with uh, except just getting some victories. But more importantly, that's what all those guys are doing is helping this team win. And they've been uh, such key and as well as Will Giddings, has been key components of, of our success for the last four years. Uh, they've all logged so many minutes and, um, and truly our identity of this year's team and for a while. And um, just very thankful to have these guys part of the team. Well, the Mustangs had to bounce back the next night, taking on Minnesota Crookston on Hawaiian night crowd. And uh, let's take a look at those highlights. And, Coach, usually not that hard to get up for it because of the great crowd and the, the atmosphere. But uh, Mitch Wegg doing just that, keeping the Mustangs going here early with the first basket of the game for Southwest. And then Mitch doing it again with the right hand, gets it off that back iron. And like I said earlier, going into the game, it was all about feeding off the energy of the crowd. And uh, we wanted to press. We wanted to make it an up-tempo game uh, and hoping that we were going to be just more efficient than Crookson throughout the night. Well, Derek Red, that was the player we talked about for UMC, hit a lot of threes early on to, to keep UMC in the lead at, or early on at about four points. And, and uh, the Mustangs just slowly chipped into that here near the midway point of the uh, first half. Here's Smith in the paint. And the Mustangs slowly chip away. And here's Smith again. You know, Wag off the uh, elbow and into Smith. And just patient, waiting, waiting. No weak side help. And uh, Nick ties the game up at 14 with that particular basket. And here's Smith giving the Mustangs the lead. And this starts the 24-0 run. Um, or actually, we'll get a, another hoop here. And uh, it starts it up here, the, the run for the Mustangs. Bernard Birch. And uh, that gave the Mustangs a four-point lead, and here we go. And the one thing about our offense, which I, I, I like, is at the end of the year when, uh, when you're in the postseason, you have to find a way to get easy points. And you have to find a way to, to get those higher percentage points because you may be in an environment where it's just not a great shooting environment. And I think that's where uh, 60 points in the night, guys are doing a great job of tackling the rim and, and not settling for, uh, for poor shots. Southwest 59% shooting in this first half of these clips. Very high level. The Mustangs ranking second in the conference in conference games in field goal shooting and also in the top 15 nationally in that category. You're seeing some big time plays. There's Giddings with a dunk off a beautiful pass from Birch. And. Uh, and despite the fact the Mustangs just one three-pointer in this uh, first 20 minutes, still getting plenty of touches in the paint. You can see where all that scoring, 60 in the paint, and plays just like that, Giddings with the beautiful up and under. And a lot of it was right off our initial action. So um, you know, I think Crookson got down on themselves a little bit. They looked a little frustrated, uh, just weren't defending at maybe the level that they're capable of in that first half. Go on to the second half. Mustangs leading 46-22 and got to start strong because, you know, UMC is going to try to bring it as much as they can. And there's Nick Smith. Officials not falling for the uh, possible flop there by the UMC player. Bernard Birch with an and one. And as the second half uh, went on, I, I think it's a sign of an experienced group where they didn't let down. Uh, we were working hard. We were still pressing a little bit, running up and down. Uh, it could have very easily got sloppy, and I thought the guys did a great job of uh, of maintaining their uh, di their discipline. Nice move by Condon, very easy. There's a nice back door, gets the layup over to Birch. Condon, career highs in points, 20 and rebounds at six. And uh, also saw that beautiful pass. There's a drive again. Really has uh, opened that up pretty balanced. Scored nine in the first half, had th three rebounds, and then scored 11 points in the second, added three more boards. You also got a chance, Coach, to uh, don't have a lot of numbers uh, with one of the players, uh, Cole Martin, out for personal reasons. I mean, you don't have a lot of depth. 
to use, but everybody got a chance to play a lot of minutes as well. And that's always nice when you can get those minutes. You know, Cole will be back with us next week. Just had to run home uh, for family, and um, we sure did miss him because he was going to get an opportunity to make a run, uh, and he will on Friday as well, earlier in the game than what uh, he's been lately. So, uh, but no, it's been uh, it was nice. Anytime you can get David Condon, I think David's parents were were in the stands this weekend and. Uh, for them to drive that far and get to see him play, that's always a good thing. There's Condon in the left block, makes the extra pass, and Southwest scoring there. Southwest 58% shooting in the second half. Crookston at 31. Mustangs outscore the Golden Eagles 33-31. There's a three by Condon. And uh, the Mustangs uh, get the victory 79-53 to and uh, beat UMC uh, here. It had a, a big run against the Golden Eagles the last 10 years or so. And uh, uh, fortunately, the Mustangs get that win back in the, in the win column and now uh, improve to 14-8 and and 11-5 and in the conference. And Coach, a big couple of weekends coming up. There's only six regular season games left. The next four on the road at Minnesota State, at Concordia St. Paul, and then go to U Mary and Minot State uh, in a couple of weeks. But the big stretch of games here, every game now in February is. But, uh, uh, you know, four games and playing on the road, this really can kind of set that tone to see what kind of team we want to be here to, to finish up here getting into the postseason. And when you're looking at all these wins, I mean, I think <clears throat> it's safe to say we're, we're trying to think big picture. We're, we're thinking about the NCAA tournament and trying to do whatever we can do uh, to kind of put ourselves in that talk. And we're close. Uh, right now we're, we're in the mix with uh, the Bemidji's, the St. Clouds, and Moorheads, and obviously Winona and Mankato set themselves in a pretty good situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're in the mix, but like you said, uh, we can't have any slip-ups. It's, it's at that time of the year where you have to be able to make a run and, and you have to go and, and beat people on the road as well as take care of your home court. Yeah, and the Mustangs will play at Minnesota State, nationally ranked team in Mankato. And uh, Coach, uh, you know, they've been beaten uh, three times in conference, twice by Winona State, including at home, and they lost at Moorhead as well. But this is a, a high offensive team and they, they put up a lot of points had uh, triple digits their last game against uh, Minot State but uh, this is going to be a challenge coming up here on, on Friday night and uh, you know take it one game at a time but talk about the Mavericks they've got an inside and uh, outside game and they're as complete of a basketball team as you're going to find uh, they have a big guy inside who uh, demands a double team a lot of the game and he's just mean and he's just aggressive he's mean he can finish he rebounds well and he blocks shots so uh, a very good player inside for them. And then they have the point guard who leads the nation in assists. Uh, he obviously makes his teammates better. Uh, he finds guys throughout the court. Uh, he's also a guy that can knock down threes and can be a scorer. So uh, it kind of starts with those two guys, but they have a lot of complementary players that are good. Uh, they have guys that are blue collar, rebound, defend. They have guys that are catch and shoot. Uh, a well-balanced team and a team that's going to take a great effort to beat. And then on Saturday, the Mustangs play in St. Paul against Concordia University, a team that uh, is riding a winning streak. They've won three of their last uh, four games, uh, won twice last weekend. It uh, will be a, an emotional game, I'm sure, for Coach Welk. Uh, he spent a lot of time there on that sideline at Concordia St. Paul, and uh, uh, that'll be, uh, I'm sure they'll be fired up for the Mustangs on Saturday. And that's one of those games where <clears throat> um, throughout the records that the stuff doesn't matter. Uh, obviously, with Coach Welk and the connection with their players, they're going to have a little extra incentive, uh, motivation, however you want to talk about it. But, uh, um, you know, again, that's a game where we're going to go on the road, and uh, it'll be the second night. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to find a way to deal with the travel and deal with all that and uh, come out with another focused effort. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, the Mustangs play at uh, Minnesota State in Mankato starting at 8 o'clock on Friday night. And then we'll play Concordia St. Paul at 6 o'clock at the Gangelhoff Center on a Saturday. And the Mustangs have another weekend on the road to North Dakota before coming back and playing Concordia and Minnesota State to wrap up the regular season. And the conference tournament will start up the last Wednesday of uh, February. And every team makes the conference tournament uh, split up by divisions. And then the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals will all be played at the Pentagon down in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And coaches, you know, a lot can happen. Uh, still Mustangs hoping to wrap up a home playoff game and being in the top four in the South Division and uh, getting high as possible. But uh, we don't want to get too far ahead, but you look at, you talked about the regional purposes and whatnot, and that is important. That's our goal. And, um, you know, that's still a couple of weeks away, but, uh, uh, you know, 
playing those non-conference games and winning a couple of those and, and playing good teams is going to help hopefully here late February and early March when, when selection show uh, when selection Sunday happens and especially when you're looking at <clears throat> when you're looking at the d2 in region record uh, we we have two more wins uh, you know a lot of our schools in our conference you don't play any d2 teams mm -hmm. so uh, that does give us an advantage uh, where um, you get couple, put a couple more wins in the in that column and um, you know it also helps your strength of schedule and it helps your RPI a little bit so uh, there's a lot of advantages of going out and playing difficult teams uh, in non-conference, and hopefully that'll help us out uh, in the long run, like like we predicted it would. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been uh, as far as as we finish here. When you're looking at different schedules, there's a lot of tough matchups in the league as well. Uh, Augustana <clears throat> and Wayne have to go play Winona in Upper Iowa two times, so that's going to be some tough games. Uh, Moorhead and Northern also have to play some tough games, mm -hmm. and St. Cloud as well. So all those teams that uh, are, the, are towards the top have to play some challenging games yeah. as, as well as we do. We do so yeah. um, now I will say Bemidji's schedule may have, they may have some advantages. They may have a chance to, to make a run, but uh, those teams that they play and their challenge, they're, they're going to have to knock them off as well. Yeah, should be fun uh, next couple of weeks. Again, three more weekends of basketball, uh, regular season uh, in the Northern Sun Conference. Coach, thanks for being back here in studio. We appreciate your uh, candidness as always. want to thank you for watching as well as the Mustangs play at Minnesota State and at Concordia this weekend. Uh, so uh, check it out if you can and get over to those places and cheer on the Mustangs. For the head coach, Brad Bigler, I'm Kelly Law. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler. Until next time, go Mustangs.